It's GED question of the daytime, so let's take a look at this little problem um, from February 8th. It says, identify the greatest common divisor that could be used to reduce the fraction below to lowest terms. So this problem is interesting to me because a lot of students will panic or freeze up when they see a fraction problem but actually, the fraction here is not really the point of this problem. Notice what they're asking us to find. They say, identify the greatest common divisor. You might have heard this phrase before, or it might kind of sound like another phrase you've heard of. We know um, another word, a greatest common factor. I bet a lot of you repeated that or, or were able to say that before it even came out of my mouth. Greatest common factor. Because we talk about that, that so much in math class. Well, as it turns out, what factor means is a number that divides another number perfectly with no remainder. Um, so factor and divisor, those um, are synonyms. So greatest common divisor, greatest common factor, I'm talking about the exact same thing, okay? So even though I have a fraction here, um, and even though it does talk about reducing fraction, it's important to understand that this is a greatest common factor problem uh, because we reduce fractions by dividing out common factors. The quickest and easiest way to reduce a fraction is by dividing out the greatest common factor. Now, it's not the only way, but it's a real quick way. So this question here is not really asking you about the fraction. It's really asking you about the GCF, the greatest common factor of these two numbers, 45 and 75. Now, traditionally, there's three methods that are taught in school to do greatest common factor. Um, I, <clears throat> I myself prefer this little stair step method. I don't even know what it's called, but where you basically just pull out one factor at a time until the two numbers have nothing left in common. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 45 and 75, and I'm going to look for t uh, numbers that 45 and 75 uh, factors that they have in common, numbers that can divide them both. Well, I happen to know that both 45 and 75 are on my five times tables because they both end in five. That was real obvious to me. So I'm going to divide that 5 out of both of them and see what's left. 45 divided by 5 is 9. 75 divided by 5, ooh, uh, that one you might not have memorized, but 5 goes into 7 once. Remainder 2, 5 goes into 25 five times. And if you're impressed with how quickly I did that division, you might want to check out my site division video. That's what I was just doing there, site division or short division. Okay, I am not yet done with this problem though. It's important when you're looking for greatest common factor that you don't just pull out one number that they have in common, but you pull out all the numbers they have in common. I'm sorry, my Facebook um, messaging is blowing up. Apparently I'm getting a bunch of notifications. <laughs> um, but let's take a look here at these two numbers, nine and 15 still have something in common. Both 9 and 15 are on the 3 times tables. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide a 3 out of both of these numbers. They also have a common factor of 3. So 3 goes into 9 3 times, and 3 goes into 15 5 times. And I just want to keep continuing this process until these two numbers have nothing left in common besides the number 1 no common factors besides one. When I do greatest common factor or reducing fractions to my students, I always say, you reach one and you're done. Um, okay, so when I look at these two numbers that I have left, three and five, three is a prime number, so I know the only things it's divisible by are one and three. I can't divide it by anything else. Five is also a prime number. The only thing it's divisible by is one and five. I can't divide it by anything else, so I've got to one. So. As soon as one is the only thing they have in common, you're done. We're going to stop right here. One and done. Now, what happened? I found two factors that these numbers had in common, five and three. If I want the greatest common factor, what I'm going to have to do is combine these two numbers. Now, you might be thinking, Kate, how am I going to combine them? You want me to add? You want me to subtract? What do you want me to do with these? 
Well, let's think about how we pulled them out. They were factors, so to pull them out, we did division. If you break numbers apart through division, you know how you're gonna put them back together? Doing the opposite of division, doing multiplication. So we're gonna multiply these numbers back together to find the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor of 45 and 75 is 15. Now, some of you lucky, lucky people just saw 45 and 75 and the number 15 popped into your head. That's brilliant. Um, lucky you if it did. For the rest of us, the stair-step method can allow us to find a greatest common factor one factor at a time. Okay, great. So the answer to this is 15. The greatest common divisor that could be used to reduce the fraction below is 15. Notice it's not a fraction problem. I didn't actually have to do the reducing. Um, it was a GCF problem in disguise. Um, if you have any questions, uh, make sure you drop them in the comments. Um, a couple of other uh, ideas and concepts you might want to check out. I have GCF videos, two of them on the um, website. One of them that will reinforce this method here, or if you don't like this method, there's the traditional GCF method up on the website as well, and also that site division video that will allow you to do division quickly in your head. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. And we are done.